There we go. Set up properly now. Hey, everybody. All right. I just think with the landscape view, you guys can see a little bit better. Awesome. Cool. All right, we're back. Tell me how your weekend was. Did you miss your daily dose of Dina? <laughs> uh, it was nice to have a break for me a little bit, but it felt weird to not chatting with you all. Did you all survive the weekend? I felt like the weekend was difficult. Because at least, I mean, weekdays give me structure because I do work in the studio. I'm, I have some deadlines coming up. I have new stamps and stencils coming up, which I'll be finishing, among a few other things. So, yep, the church conference was great. So, it, you know, weekdays are nice. Well, they're not nice. They're long. But, you know, uh, and then... Uh, I did a lot of knitting this weekend. Did a lot of knitting. The rails are getting long on that piece, so it's taking forever. <laughs> yeah. All right, good to have everybody. need to hit the grocery store today. I saw how they were recommending not going to the grocery store for two weeks. Well, my two oldest boys are coming home from their school is finishing. They could have come home ages ago because everything was online, but they stayed. So my husband's going to need to fly up and help them drive home because my oldest is graduating from university. So he is, he has a job. Hopefully it's still okay. Starting June 1st down here in Arizona. So he's moving and down and then my other son will be home for the summer. Um, do you use a pattern? Oh no, I don't wing it. No, no, no. Definitely using a pattern for sure. I'm not that, I'm, I'm the world's okayest knitter, remember? And really, and I'm calling the shawl I'm making the shawl of mistakes. Hey, I grew up in Michigan. Let us start and play around. Question about overpainting. If I print a photo, um, print it on, Michelle, print it on paper. Just don't use photo paper. Doesn't matter what kind of paper you use. I mean, just use whatever paper comes out of your printer. Should be fine. I wouldn't use slick, glossy photo paper, though. Okay, so today's subject is, is chipboard shapes. These came into the line um, maybe a year or two ago. And they are fun. And I find that I'm, I use them over and over and over and over. And I mean, there's really not a lot of mystery to them, but I thought I would show you some of my favorite ways to use these shapes. Um, first thing to remember is because they are chipboard, they will disintegrate over time. You know, it's not like a permanent mask. So, so you know, so let's say you, you use it and you paint over it and spray over it a ton and ton and ton. Eventually that chipboard's gonna break down and get soaked, right? So there is a limit to how long you can use them, use them um, before they start to soak up everything. Um, but I, the limit's pretty, I mean, you can use them quite a few times. So I guess they're versatile in the sense that you've got these shapes that you can use as a mask for, you know, many times, you know, a few t quite a few times over. And then after you've, you've used them as a mask, you still have the, the shape left that you can then use as you know whole so in a way they're a background tool uh, and they're also a focal point tool which I, I think is fun the other thing I really like about using the chipboard shapes is because they have a little bit of a relief to them they're a little thick that they will provide texture and a little depth to a page or a tag or a card or whatever you're making so I find them just really versatile and, and fun to use. And there are three set, or there were three original sets. There were these botanicals and then persona. If you've had class with me, you've used a lot of persona. <laughs> and then there's another set of 
basic shapes like these. And then the ones that just came out in January are, oh, there's ocean shapes. There's a set of words, which I only have, I could only find one. So apparently I've used my entire quantity of my word chip. I need to order some more. And then a set of like bird, there's a bird and a bee and flying birds, butterflies, things like that, flying creatures, okay? So that's the current lineup. And as you can see from my box, you can see I've, some of them I've used in the past and then thrown in the box because I, you know, I wanted to use it as a mask and it's still, you know, I can still play around with it and it's not quite, um, you know, it's not done. It's use usefulness isn't done and I, and I don't have a place yet, you know, to put it as a focal point. So let's start with a few background ideas with these puppies. Where to put my box? I came into the studio this morning and realized um, I was filming an abs a online class on Friday. It's turning out so good. It is a basic abstracts, cl abstracts class. And these are some of the samples. So if you take that class when it's done, these you'll watch me paint these from scratch in the class and I have a couple more videos to film and then I can start to edit. So anyway, I can't, I use a lot of brushes in during the filming of that class because a lot of my um, techniques for this class, I like, I don't like my brush to be super wet. And I came home, I came in today and noticed, oh, I probably had about, mm, no joke, 35 or 40 brushes sitting in my brush water <laughs> that I left there all weekend. So, you know, as one does. All right, so the most obvious thing to do with these chipboard shapes, of course, is to mask around them. And so that just means to, to lay them down, to paint or spray around them, and then you've got the, the, the shape there. And one of my favorite things to do is to mask around them on the Collage Collective. So this is a piece from the Collage Collective, and I, I'm going to mask this bird from one of the new sets, and I'm going to use acrylic paint, and I'm going to use it with a dry brush because I, I want to avoid seepage. I want you guys to know I cleaned my craft sheet for you today. <laughs> Shocker. So because these have a higher relief, they're a little more difficult to paint over as a mask. And for that reason, I find that the mini blending tool doesn't really work great for these to paint over because I'm using a dry brush. What's nice, my brushes have, you know, a stiffer bristle and I can, I can bury that bristle right down and, and get past the relief of the, how thick the chipboard is, is what I'm trying to say. This is, you know, masking over the Collage Collective is great for any of those pages that you think look like puke on a page. And some of them in there are puke on a page. They're meant to be puke on a page because they're meant for you to, you know, cut up and play with in any way that you feel like. They're not all, they're not necessarily meant to be these amazing life-changing pieces of art. But masking over the Collage Collective is just easy and fun. Um, where I've seen people go wrong is too much paint on your brush. That seems to be common. Have you heard me say that? <laughs> most not most but a lot of people when they're new to this kind of thing you're just you're just loading your brush far too much just you you need so much less than you think you need and so i would uh have you load paint onto a brush and then take you know half of it off before you even put your brush to the paper so now I'm putting a little magenta. Just want to change colors a bit. It's 
going to give kind of a shadowy outline. Can you see it there? Barely, right? La, la, la. Just give myself more. Yeah, everybody is, Marcy. Everybody uses too much paint. So many people. And but you know, and that's when you'll struggle, at least in my class, because a lot of the techniques that I demo, I'm not overloading the brush. You know, and that, that's a personal preference. You know, there's really no right or wrong. I mean, you might have a class with another teacher that tells you to, you know, really load the brush. I, I, I turn Van Gogh into a verb. I call it Van Goghing it. When people are really, really overloading their brushes, and, and you know that makes really cool impasto. So impasto is the technique where you put paint on really thick and you can see the brush stroke. And it's, you know, if you were allowed to touch it in the museum, you could reach out and you could touch the, the paint and it would feel bumpy, right? Visible texture in the paint is impasto. Um, and impasto has its place, it's pretty cool. But the problem with it in a journal or in a class situation is then you, you can't keep working the way I normally work if you're using a heavy impasto hand. So I'll tell people, stop Van Goghing it. Just because there's a price and that price is time. So now I'm going, I'm going over the masking, masking again with white. So the, of course the paint's not staying white because I haven't cleaned my brush but I'm getting some other kind of shadowy shapes back there. And I've got myself a little fleet of birds. Fleet. <laughs> Flock. All right, so I'm gonna do one more blue one here. Another advantage to putting paint on really thin like I do is you could almost immediately um, write on it. I mean, w with a food eyeball. Almost. I mean, it's. I wish you could feel it. Like this. This feels dry. And again, granted, I live in a dry place, but it's. It's really less about that than it is about your paint load. Okay. Nice. What's amazing about this food ball is I've never killed one. You definitely can't write on it if you've used way too much paint. It's another reason why a dry brush is key for this. If your brush is wet, you're going to be adding moisture to that paint. It's going to seep under. And then you'll struggle a little bit. If you have any that didn't turn out very good, remember an outline fixes everything. The outline of where it should go, not where it ended up. <laughs> I've got two focal point birds and lots of shadowy birds. Sometimes I lay the shape on there thinking, See, I think the shape would look amazing on there as well, don't you? But it's the wrong color. But that is something we can change. Let's paint the shape a little bit. So I'm taking cues for the color of the bird from the color in the background. And I'm just going to paint it so that it is going to stand out a bit more against that blue that night I was using night I think that works what do you guys think heck yeah we're gonna speckle it So I'm 
going to go ahead and speckle with yellow. Make everything pop. I like that. Let's find some words. I always say that these opening these little bags of tissue are like opening Costco salad. So you know you're having a party and or people over and you think, oh, you know, they, they, they suck all the air out of those salad bags so they don't look like there's that much in there, right? So you buy Costco salad and then you take it home. You know, you buy two because you think, oh, I'm probably going to need, you know, I'm making a really big salad. You take it home, you, you know, you open it up and all of a sudden that <laughs> lettuce multiplies and it becomes like... It, it, it's, you know, you needed half a bag of salad, not the two bags you bought. That always cracks me up. And so the, I always think the tissues are a little bit like that. They look really sweet in their package. And then you open them up and bam, they are all over the place. They're on your cat's rear end half the time. I'll track them all over the house. It's just, they, they take on a life of their own. Um... I tried for a while to contain my tissues in one of the metal gel plate tins, and it works well, but then my quantity of tissue, <laughs> it got a little too uh, crazy. So I still have some in the gel plate tin. It works really well. And then eventually, <sighs> I also outgrew it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use uh, ultra thick gel for my glue. I'm also gonna grab an archival black ink pad. I could take the pen and outline the bird as well. I'll actually outline the chipboard itself, but I'd rather now being lazy, just ink the edges so carefully. And then go ahead and put the bird there. I'm not going to worry about this piece of tissue quote. I'm not going to worry about it like wanting to blend it into the background. So I'm just going to put a little glue underneath it like I'm just gluing it on, not, not uh, blending it. Oh, you know what? Mm -mm -mm. I want to do this. So what I'm doing, even though I've already glued it, <laughs> this is why my scissors are a hot mess. There's already glue on the back of this tissue because I am Dina and I don't think ahead. And I'm going to stick the words on the bird. There we go. So then the bird's down, the quote's on the bird. And then, you know, the question could be, well, what do, what do I do with this? I would stick it right in my journal. You can tip it in and make it its own page. You can cut it down and mount it on a page. But it's, I love the dimension that you get and the repetition that you get from putting the chipboard shape on with the masking bit. Isn't that pretty? Easy and cool. Um, another thing I like to do, these chipboard shapes, especially once they've been painted, is I like to stamp right on them. Somebody mentioned the other day they wish they had an Semic writing stamp. In this stamp set, for the love of circles, it's a it's a couple a few years old, but I'm pretty sure it's still available. There is a nice Asemic writing stamp in this set, um, so there that is an option for you. I am going to use this word though. I'm using a word from I never remember the names. Strongmen. <laughs> it says life is tough, but so are you. Yeah, that circle set is a really good basic set. So this this is just going to be some you know, decorating. It's you know, this I'm not I wouldn't try to stamp this so that it was necessarily legible so that everybody who looks at the page is going to be like, "Oh, that's the quote for the page." Probably, you know, I just won't probably won't go that far, but Something like that is awesome. So something that th this little book here, 
is a book from one sheet of paper. I just started with a lot bigger piece of paper. I started with an 18 by 24 inch piece of watercolor. Actually, that might not be true. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I don't know. Or it could be nine by, I don't know, I'll look it up for you guys. So anyway, it started big and then I folded it into the book. I taped it with tape to keep the edges shut. And then I put some of the tags that I've been using to demo in the book. So I've got this nice large book to play with. And I think that would be so cool on the front, don't you? I have a lot of, I grabbed a lot of tissue that is in my collage box um, with, there's a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Um, gloss spray on this tissue already. It was, it was kind of, I was using it as mop-up tissue. So I'm gonna put that there. So now I'm just adding some layers, some background layers. So my, my, uh, you guys can probably hear the leaf blower. My gardening guy is here. We're lazy and don't do our own yard. Reed and I decided as long as we can keep paying our service to people to come and help us, um, we will keep doing that because they need the money too. And so I'd rather sacrifice in other areas and keep paying people that help us so much. So I'm just adding a few under layers for my shape. I think that's what I'm looking for is like book pa dictionary paper, but I don't see it. So say lobby. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I love the way the stamping looks on that. Isn't that cool? That's also this, this circle shape that's in the original basic set is one of the, um, this shape is really easy to cover with, with tissue as well. All right, any way to stop wrinkles in tissue? Yes, the way to stop it is use the correct glue and then be at peace with some wrinkles. But if you use my, um, my original gel medium and glue carefully, you can get most of the wrinkles out. It just takes a minute. You like to fold up a map again? <laughs> yeah, Carissa, yeah. Putting, you put, I don't put my tissue back, yeah. Yeah, they just explode. Um, let's see. There was another question. I lost it. So, oh, ascetic writing. And Michelle piped up and said she thinks Scrappy Chic may have uh, that for the Love of Circle set. So anyway, there's one page decorated <laughs> of my little book. And so now that this is, is going to be a theme, what I'll do is I'll dig through my little box and find more of those. I know I have tons of those. Maybe not. You can tell which shapes I use constantly, and that is one of them. This is also one of them. This this shape looks really good um, stamped on. So does the heart. The heart looks really good stamped on and covered in tissue. So what I mean by that is, what I'll do is take take my collage tissue, either either black and white or tissue that I've already painted it or tinted. Tear it into bits. The tissue does have a grain, so one way will be easy to tear and one won't, but you know, you're grown up, you can survive. You can also cut it with no ill effect. So if I wanna cover this heart, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the ultra thick because this tissue has a lot of gloss spray in it and it's crinkly and I just want it to glue down real good. So I'm coating the, the shape with glue and I'm just going to start collaging as I go and cover the shape with the tissue. You can also cover it with collage collective paper or any other pattern paper that you may have. You can cover these with washi tape. The um, Ugo that does our yard, he's so sweet. He um, he likes to talk to my husband because my husband did it many years ago, 30 years ago, did a two-year church mission in Mexico City. 
And so he thinks my husband's Spanish accent is funny because in Mexico City, kind of like, you know, we have different accents in our country in different regions. In Mexico City, they have a very particular accent. And so my uh, blonde, blonde, blonde hair, blue eyed husband speaks Spanish with a Mexico City accent. <laughs> it's called Chilangolandia. Chilango accent. And so our uh, Ugo gets a kick out of hearing my husband speak Spanish. And I, you know, I don't really speak very good. I speak caveman Spanish because I don't remember any nouns. So he, he, he like, you know, he'll chat with me. But he loves it when Reed's home so we can tease him about, <laughs> tease him about his accent. I just think it's funny. So cover these in tissue, in paper. Look how delicious that looks. Oh, I think it needs to be speckled. I didn't do a very good job, but you know, do I care? No. A little bright speckle. And then you've got your paper tissue or paper covered shape. You can lay these right on the want it right on paper. Lay them down, um, you know, wrong side to wrong side, and you can cut them around with an exacto knife if you want to get uh, if you want to get a nice even paper cover covering on one of these. So definitely a fun way to use these as well. Not pretty. I mean, it just gives it more texture, more dimension. I just like it. Cool. Maybe this will be my basic shape, basic shapes chipboard decorating book. Love having a concept like that. Okay, what was I going to show you with this one? Oh, just covering. So I covered the heart because it's a little bit easier. Yeah, the sheen on the tissue from the spray, and it makes the tissue crinkly and crackly like glassy. It's really, really cool. Another thing that I like to do with the chipboard is not necessarily use the shapes whole. <laughs> So let's see, let's find a good one. And so again, these, this, this basic set is really, really nice for this sort of thing. Let's see if I can find another one. I will say probably my, my one of my most used shapes is this fern in botanicals and then this is the large persona silhouette notice that he's been poured on so paint pouring I'll use chipboard shapes to paint you know especially to I'll put them underneath or, or I pick up over pouring and then you've got this cool pour on the on the larger shapes it works so good all right, so let me pull a tag from one of the demos. Let's see. All right, so let's say I'm gonna use this tag. And then I want to, Uh, okay, Victoria asked, did you say you use the chipboard as a stamp? No, I don't, but you could. You could put paint on it and print with it, but I stamped on the chipboard, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to use these as an accent on this. I know that I want these to contrast in color, so I'm going to spray them cheddar and lemon. So I'm going to grab some, I'm going to grab some paper to use as a to catch my overspray and possibly still use for something else later. I'm gonna go ahead and spray around these. If I miss questions, just I'll give you time in a little bit to ask again. The, uh, the gesso shapes are pre, or the chipboard shapes, excuse me, are pre-gessoed. So you'll notice there is a, a side that has a little bit of white on it, and then there is a side that has um, that's just plain chip. And so you're going to want to use, if you're applying spray or paint, you're going to want to use the, the, the paint, the side that's white, the side that's been gessoed. 
the reason I will always spray over, you know, a piece of scrap, because now I, th that may end up somewhere for me. Another thing I like to do with the voids, and we'll be doing this more in the gloss spray demo, is blot excess off. Just with scissors, Raina, I'll show you. And then, that cool? So now I have this loveliness that I can use you know, this would get thrown in my, what do you call it? My basket. And then it's got something on the other side, of course, because that's how I roll. All right, so back to these. So I'm just gonna cut these. This is nice too to make them go further, especially when you don't have, you know, let's say you have two shapes, but you, you know, you know, we, and we all like the rule of threes, you know what I mean? So by cutting one in half and by having it come off the page or to the side of the tag or your, your project, it looks like you have three, even though you started with only two shapes. So don't be afraid to slice them. Slice them and dice them. So now I've got this really cool pop focal point happening on that tag. And I use again I used yellows because I've got a lot of purple there and yellow and yellow one is opposite of purple, so it gives me maximum pop. Alright, so another thing that I'll do besides cutting them and slicing them and doing surgery on them is, okay, what did I do with my box of, uh, when they start to disintegrate, you'll notice that they will, you know, the more you spray on them and the more you paint on them without actually using the shape, like I said, you'll, you'll start to notice that they'll, they'll separate, because it is paper after all. Um, and once they start doing that, sometimes I, I let them separate, and so for example, his little legs are starting to separate off because I've probably sprayed around him a ton. So you, I find, this one's not quite ready to do actually, um, once they start to kind of expand, kind of like the soap will sit in your uh, tub, <laughs> and if no kids ever use it, um, then it, it, it kind of spreads out. That's how you know your kids aren't using soap. Uh, these will start to spread out and you actually can separate them. You can separate the ch the paper layers from each other and then you've got all these cool grungy shapes to play with. This one still doesn't want to separate. Um, when I use gesso, how can I get paintbrush back to being supple? Uh, Murphy's oil soap. So if you take Murphy's oil soap with a little bit of water, soak it in overnight, it will re resurrect even dried paint out of a brush. The set with the large figures is called Persona. Persona, Persona is that set. Okay, so let's soak this. Well, I won't take the time to soak it, but pro I promise you'll get to the point when you'll see them separating and you really will be able to uh, pull, the, pull the chipboard layers apart for sure. So let me turn to a journal. Oh, and spraying these on the burlap and the fabric, or, and the, spraying over these in the burlap is fantastic. All right, so let's pick another shape. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Shall we do the dude? I'll do the dude. So again, same story, second verse. I can use him as a background element. So here, I'm just gonna use gloss spray to give myself the shape of him. And then let that dry. <laughs> 
as dry as Dina lets things go. And then I've got this background element. I could make him focal point, actually. Um, but I've got this lovely shape. So I started with acrylic paint in that background. That acrylic paint, it was just a few swipes of turquoise, it looks like, probably left over from another day. And then spray right over the shape with the gloss spray. You can spray over them with dilutions, um, distress, any, you know, any of the mediums you have, you can totally play with with them. Let's spray on some of the burlap. Find I've been using the burlap. There's not as much burlap in this journal as there was in previous ones because of everybody whining. <laughs> but I still really like it. It just gives a really cool texture. So chipboard shapes, let's do. And then I'm gonna flip through this journal and I'm gonna show you. Uh... Oh, that one's too good to spray over. Flowers cascading down the page. Doesn't want to spray because I left the lid off of it, you guys. Uh, and I realized it when I came back today. So it's giving this one's giving me fits. Put your lids back on. I do as I say, not as I do. I don't know why it's a lesson I can't seem to learn. It's because I don't think and I move very quickly when I create. There we go. I got it back, you guys. I resurrected it. If you can if you can scratch the the tip off, you'll find that you really can bring them back to life a lot of the time. Not I mean not every single time, but Keep working, keep pumping it, and uh, it, it might come back to you. All right, still doesn't want to, does it? Oh, Nina, why do you do this to yourself? Right now, as I, I came in this morning and put pop, I, I saw so many without lids and I popped all the lids back on. I'm like, Dina, you idiot. Uh, I don't know why I do things like that, you guys, why? Anyway, look how great it looks on the burlap and then seeing it go through the, to the other page um, helped me realize that the burlap looks amazing so if you this is why this page is cut because I cut out the burlap so that I could use it as a mask so I'm going to cut it into shape I'm going to pull out a ton of the strings you might be able to flush it it's yeah I really think it's gonna come back to life fine. I just need to keep playing with it. It's gonna be all right. So I'm pulling some strings out so I get some cool effects here. I like the strings to be imperfect. Heaven forbid I'm, I do anything too orderly. All right, so then I've messed around with that burlap. See that? And then I'm going to use that as my mask. This has nothing to do with the chipboard shapes, <laughs> except that it's fun to spray over. And then you have a piece of dyed fabric that you can put on something. That looks cool. And then maybe my flying bee on there, right? I like it. Look how good he's looking. Because he already had paint on him, um, the gloss spray is beating up. Because remember, acrylic, the gloss spray, which is acrylic, will resist on other acrylic because there's no solvent in it to make it stick all the way like regular spray paint and it just gives you effects that you can't plan so like he looks fantastic like he needs to go here for sure doesn't he oh and then journaling on all of these lines 
Don't you think? I think so. I think that's gonna be, that's gonna be for sure. Let me flip through this journal and show you um, some of the ways I've used burlap in it. Not burlap, excuse me. Some of the ways I've used, uh, what do you call it? Chipboard shapes. So I'm just putting a piece of white tissue. It looks like it has a face on it just to, because there's so much wet spray there. All right. So a lot of these journals you've seen me flip through a million times, but I'll just point out the chip. So sometimes if my background is already really, really colorful, I stick a chipboard piece on in its raw form. So I noticed I did quite a few times in this this particular journal. I had just stuck stuck it on. I do think that would look really good with stamping on it because this is black and then black um, words would look really, really amazing on that. Let's do it. And there's definitely no writing on this page yet. Remember I said I'll go back when I feel like it and write on things. Cool. User error. So now we've got some cool, uh, cool text on there. I'm going to outline them too with a pen. make things pop so it just it's just gonna give me more texture and visual interest if I want to stamp on the raw chip okay so there's chipboard there here's another raw chip I just stapled him on the tag um, I think I've mentioned this that octopus is one of my absolute favorite animals in the in the ocean they are so incredibly intelligent and gosh, they're just, they're just amazing. So in order to make the, him pop off the tag, he would need to be maybe pink because there's a, there's green in the background. So I can come back and put a little pink on him if I want, or I can leave him raw. Let's see. This, this right here is white on white tissue with gloss spray. We'll talk more about that on another day chipboard here. So this was a bee that I had used over and over and over other places. He ended up quite dark and kind of, I, I liked the way he looked stapled to that tag. So that worked out good. And so I'll, I'll put him on the tag and then the tag gets put in the journal as a focal point. And it, it just, it works out good. Another chipboard piece here. So one of the kind of from the botanical set love the effect you can tell i did many different layers of gloss spray probably spraying around this at some point and then it just it needed it needed the outline in order to stand out from that crazy background so then i outlined it and i like it another chipboard love the birds this there's the stamp set from years ago matches it so if you still have that i think you can still get that bird stamp set don't know for sure, but there is a stamp set with that image in it as a stamp as well. Um, here is some of the coral or sea uh, grass in the, the set with the ocean critters. And so that one I'd been spraying over again somewhere and then I just stapled. No, notice I'm still using my stapler. Yeah, Carmen Miranda in my journal. Um, that went right there. And this here is the negative this is what's so good about the words, is that when you spray around the words to color them, you end up with the, the you know, the negative of the words. And you then th these you can also cut out and use. That The words are probably my most used set from the new, the new incarnations. This could have been chip. It was actually a, a piece of stencil I cut out, but that could have been chip. Here's... A word stapled right on there. Remember, we ma I made this page and then couldn't find it when I was demoing something, and then I later found it, and this ended up on there. And then again, the negative from the word. I definitely need more words, and I need them bigger. <laughs> I just gotta make that happen. 
silhouette from Persona. So another piece of chip there. Um, so you'll see that they're, they're popping up on a lot of my journal pieces. This is also um, just shredded bits from some of the denim pages. I like the textural element that that added as well. La, 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 la. Let's go back to this. La, 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 la. What, wasn't this the one? No, wait. This is the one. Okay. He is looking awesome. Can't wait to play with that page. And then back here is the other one. Or maybe it isn't. You guys, this is why I need a handler. Here's another negative for the word. La, 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 la. Does this give you guys some ideas for using these babies? They really are versatile because of the t number of times you can use them. And they're, they're I mean, they're not a, there's not, they're not really like a mask, stencil mask, but they're definitely versatile in the ways that you can uh, play with them. Do I have packs of burlap and denim? I do not, but when I do want some of the burlap and denim, I just cut it out of my journal. What's making me laugh, you guys, is I cannot find the one that I just did. <laughs> what did I do with it? Ah. I found it. So he will go on here. Now I'm singing it. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm so annoying. The other thing that worries me about the grocery store issue is I'm about to have two young men back in my house. The amount of food that I'm going to need is going to, you know, I, I didn't need to go to the grocery store that much when... Um, when they were gone because it's just me and Reed. Even though I feel like I am gaining the Corona 20. I think I've already, I think I gained it before I started. That was half the problem. I'm gonna put that down. He's gonna go there. He's kind of in the middle, which I think is kind of fun. Let's see what else. Oh, 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 I knew I had dictionary on here somewhere. Our Kroger, um, there's no delivery because they, they open slots up right in the morning and you have to be awake at like 5 a.m. to grab a slot and they go within 10 minutes or something like that. So it sort of sucks. La, 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 la. Walmart, our Walmart too. I try not to give my money to Walmart, but some people don't have a choice. I, I realize that. It has a name, yeah, the Corona 20. Oh. Hi, Jason. Your delivery is out to April 11th. Wow. La, 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 la. I'm not when I make art is careful. <laughs> you guys have figured that out though by now, right?
by the way, um, if you have Disney Plus, they put Onward for free, of course, on Disney Plus, and it's so cute. It was the Pixar from this year. We didn't make it to the theater to see it. I didn't, I don't know, I hadn't heard much about it. I mean, it got really good ratings, but we watched it last night. It's really good. If you haven't seen it, um, even though we're grown up and we have no little kids left in our house, we are still a big Disney fans. Disney Plus. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, I was t talking to my son Carter about it, and he was like, I cried, Mom. I cried. It's so good. He's, he, he has a sensitive heart. Well, actually, so, all my boys do. They are sweet. Uh, sweet, sweet boys. Our cats won't know it hit them because... They're, they're so fun and, and needy, but they're going to be so happy to have more warm bodies to pet them all day. <laughs> because I am, you know, I'm at work, and then my husband's working, and so half the time I'm shooing them out if they're in my way. And so, yeah. I think so well. All right. So that might be how I would, well, that not might be. I glued it, baby. So I layered that page, text, burlap, the burlap that I sprayed over, the persona. I mean, I think almost everything I made in this uh, demo, including this little yellow and pink background piece, which worked out perfectly. These were prints from the other day when I was, I did a demo for Scrapping Clearly Virtual Cyber Crop. And that was some of the prints that I did. It just feels good to glue, you guys. I just absolutely love it. This is, this is really how I work. Glue as I go. I decide I want something under there that wasn't there before. Therefore, I must be able to lift said glue. <laughs> oh, Dina. Nice. La, 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 la. I'm looking for, <laughs> which won't help any of you because you're not in here to help me look. I'm looking for my ocean spray, which I might have used the last open bottle. Luckily, I have spares. new bright blue would really pop on there. Plus there's blue in the background. Voila. One of those, um, the Tim Holtz sticker letter, what do they call it? Chat, chit chat, um, would be really cool on that. The black words, I think. Because I didn't move any of these tissues while I sprayed last, they're now tinted. Sweet. Bonus. I'm going to glue this down. Be thinking of any questions that you have. I'm happy to address them. But I really hope this was good ideas for you guys. Yeah, those are my little packs of tissue words. They're really inexpensive. Just remember when you open them, they're like Costco salad. <laughs> or like Carissa says, a map after you open it that you can't fold back up. <laughs> so... It's so cute, Daniela at Ranger who does my crating and kidding. She's so organized. Oh my gosh, that woman. If she ever quits, I am up Crab Creek. But she, um, she's amazed. She's had a little baby and the baby's so cute. But what's my point? My point is she'll, she'll reset my crates and put all these in nice little sheet protectors and stuff. And then uh, 
by the time I send them back to her, she probably wants to stab me because they get sent back a little cuckoo. Um, all right. Do you rip out pages to make room? I do not. I let the journals be fat. Chubby and fat. Definitely need more words. Totally agree. Milagros is amazing. If you guys aren't following her, what are you even doing with your life? Soraya, does your thick gel medium get clumps in it? Um, mine, I haven't had that problem with clumping. Just keep the lid on good so you're not getting any dried glue inside. So this, we're, okay, tissue words, we answered that. So ultra thick glue, what do you glue with? My finger, Missy, I glue with my finger. Unless I'm using gel medium, the thin gel, I will use a brush for my thin gel but my ultra thick glue in general, I just use my finger. Tipping into the journals, do you want me to show you that? Gotta find the page I did, here we go. So. There's a couple different ways to do a tip in. Um, we did size the collage collective so that it is pretty much almost exactly the same size as the journals. So you, you don't need to cut pages down, excuse me, unless you want to. Um, this one's gonna stick out just a tad, uh, but you know, do you think I care about that? No. So Diane Reevely hates the way that I tip in. <laughs> She'll tell people not to do it. So I'm gonna tell you um, her way and my way. So her way is to you stick your, your uh, page in and go ahead and do a nice tape here. Nice, like a, she has um, like a stickier tape available in sheets. You, or you can, um, so if you, if you have that product, use it. What I would use is my white media tape. the white media tape. It doesn't look like much in the package, but it's one of my most used tools. I can't live without it. And we recently redid it so that you've got a large roll. I think that's two inches maybe. And then one and then maybe three quarter. And so you can take your media tape, go ahead and put a, a big, nice piece of tape there. Oh, I didn't put enough glue on that dude. And then go ahead and, I'm just gonna staple them. Go ahead and flip the page and repeat it on the other side so that you've got tape on both sides. I'm just gonna staple him on because I didn't glue him enough. All right, okay, so then, then also tape here. So that's one way to do it. Um, the way that I will often do it is what I call a book binders tip in. And a book binders tip in is um, how uh, bookmakers will tip pages into their journal. And I like it because it's a little bit more invisible, but I will say I, I, I do do both ways depending on my mood. So with a book binder tip in, what I'm doing is I'm folding over the side of the page about half an inch. Okay, crease it down really, really good. Now the thing with this is I don't like to use a wet adhesive for this tip in, meaning glue. I don't like to use glue. I like a dry adhes adhesive, meaning um, score tape or red line tape. Um, I have a lot of score tape in my class kits because it just works really well for that. So I have red line tape in my drawer, so I'm gonna use that. So this is just a double stick tape. Sometimes I use my ATG gun. Believe it or not, I still have one of those. Actually, I have two of them, and I still use them quite a bit. So on that little piece that I folded over, I went ahead and put a nice, strong tape there. Double stick tape, okay? And then I'm going to pick the back off. This might take me 40 minutes, because getting the back off of red line tape is a special kind of hell. I will say, use your scissors or a pick, it goes much faster. Score tape comes off, the back comes off a lot easier than this red line tape does, but this red line tape is strong. <laughs> All right, so then pick, oops, still didn't do it. Oh, nope. 
Let's see if I can cut myself. That would be fantastic. If I do cut myself, I'm doing my own stitches, y'all. There we go. I got the corner now. Okay, so now I've picked the backing off that tape. And then I'm going to open it back up. So our, you know, I'm going to unfold that, that half inch hinge. Okay. Then I'm going to decide where in the journal I want it to be. It can go anywhere. Let's put it, let's put it there. And I'm going to stick the page in as tightly as I can get into that um, page join there. And then I'm going to press down on that half inch flap to burnish that tape down and stick that tape to the page behind it. So now as you're paging through another raw chipboard, apparently I was in the mood to use a lot of raw chipboard last time I, no wonder I can't find any of my freaking words. There's another chipboard shape. Sorry, I'm really bad like attention deficit oh scroll right now. Uh, chipboard shape. So chipboard shape. <laughs> I use them a ton. You guys are going to love them if you don't already. All right. So as I'm paging through, when I get to this page that I've tipped in, it's going to turn its page on that join, on that, that crease that you made. See that? So this part's still taped down, and then it is it is flipping over on that crease and it's it's a little it's kind of invisible depending on how fat you make your little gutter there the script stamped is the script stamp from a set called for the love of circles and then you know as you keep paging through and that it really will keep your page in for a long time and your page doesn't even have to be the whole as large as, um, you know, let's say I want to tip something in this journal here, but I don't want it to be quite as big. That's not a problem. Let's say I want to tip this in. Oh my gosh, that's the original. This is the original art that is in the Collage Collective. I'm not going to tip that in. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do her. Okay, so let's say you got a smaller piece that you wanna tip in. And I want this to get tipped in right there. I'm gonna do the same method. I'm gonna fold it over. And again, the smaller the fold, the less noticeable it will be. Just make sure you have the adhesive to that thin to really make sure it's anchored into the page. This is why I really don't like a wet adhesive. If you use a wet adhesive, you have to you have to stick that page, you have to put the wet adhesive all over this this little gutter, this turn that you folded. You then have to unfold it and then stick it to your page and then you need to maybe put a weight on it so that it and then walk away and let it dry. We all know how I'm quite impatient with letting things dry. So if I can get away with a dry adhesive, um, pretty much on anything actually, that's what I'll use, which is why often why I you know use that stapler all the all the time. All right, so then I've now put my tape on that gutter, that fold that that crease there, well in the gutter in the little fold over, and then I'm gonna stick that right into the binding press. So now I've got a tip in that's just part page size and you know now I can decorate on that or play on that I have this floating around out here all right. all right that makes sense so tags too you can tip in that same way um, this one I can't fold here because I put the chipboard there but I could fold it this direction and it could end up tipped in as well. Washi's too weak. Washi is meant to be removable. You cannot use washi for a tip in. Do not use washi. All right. Any other questions?
How long before my glue dries? 10 to 15 minutes, probably. So Ordered Chaos, should you finish it? Actually, this class, um, the one that I'm filming now, it, it's actually the precursor to Ordered Chaos. So it actually might help you with Ordered Chaos later. <laughs> Tape for tip in on outside of page. Felicia, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. The tape for the tip in does not go on the outside. It goes on the inside. I don't I, I don't know if that makes any sense. So ask again. Just clarify for me and I'll do my best to answer you. Thanks, you guys. Glad you like the ideas. Play with the chip. And make sure you post, make sure you hashtag, hashtag Dina Wakely Media and hashtag Ranger Inc. And enjoy. Look, here's look right here. More chipboard. When you tape a page on the outside corner. Do you mean this corner? This is this would be the out. You mean this edge? I'm so sorry. I'm not following. That's totally it's not your fault. It's my fault. Basically, if you want to tip in from this direction, is that what you're asking? I love you guys. I'll keep you all on the payroll. <laughs> Nancy, you're so good to treadmilling. You're not going to gain the Corona 20. <sighs> Alicia, same way so that it folds out. You mean going going to the right instead of to the left, Caroline? Is that what she means? So whichever side you want it to... So if I want it to open to my left, I need to tape it on the left. If I want to op If I want it to open to the right, I need to tape it on the right, if that makes sense. So if I wanted to tip this piece in and I wanted it to open this direction, then I would fold over. Hey, look what that is. Negative for the chipboard. Negative, I would, I would fold this over, I would tape it, and then I would tape over on this side, and then it would go this direction, right? Or if this wanted to, if I wanted to tip this in, on this side, again, if you want the page to turn right, if you're putting it on the left page to go right, tape the right side. If you're putting it on the right page to go left, tape the left side. Hopefully that clarified. Thank you guys for helping me, <laughs> helping me understand. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. Get back into creating some art. Hope that Hopefully that gave you some tips for Chip. And have a blast, guys. Talk to you all tomorrow.